welcome to the Camco Gibbs Cam version 14 webinar where we will show you many of the new features available to you the programmer. Our goal is to give you the best programming experience while spending less time behind the computer and more time running parts. At Camco we believe that the customer experience is the most important part of owning a professional grade cam system. Let's go straight to the first section of today's presentation and talk about interface, usability, and workflow enhancements. On the document control dialog, we have two new enhancements to help you work with Gibbs Cam easier and faster. We replace the plus and minuses with max and minimum to avoid confusion for new users as well as experienced users realizing that the X max and minimum may both be positive numbers or negative numbers the same for Y max and Y minimum depending on the way that you program. We also have under the comments section you can now place comments as well as let's say operation op 10 flip and let's put a time and date stamp there with this automatic button. This comment goes out to the floor to the operator. This comment would go to the programmer. Remember to order more drills. And you can put a time and date stamp on that as well. These two enhancements were under the document control dialog button. The next item that we want to look at in Gibbs Cam is the view control palette customization. There are two trackballs in Gibbs Cam, one here in the lower left corner and one here that can be moved anywhere around the screen. We want to save you this valuable space here in the Gibbs Cam machine workspace by giving you access to custom commands in unique areas and these areas are already taken up by the view controls but we can now right click and customize the view control with key modifiers shift control and alt let's find one of our favorite commands and add it to the trackball on the right translate once we find the translate command I can drag and drop it right onto the trackball here in the trackball customization window. Let's do 2D rotate. After we add the 2D rotate command under the shift key modifier, let's press OK. Now when I press the shift key, my translate and 2D rotate commands are now available. Again, saving valuable space here in the Gibbs Cam work area. The other trackball is also customizable for a maximum of 32 custom commands per trackball, giving us 64 commands right here at our fingertips under Control, Alt, or Delete. The next item that we want to look at is dockable menu panes. Let's go to Coordinate Systems and Work Groups we now have the ability to click this button and it says click this to convert this to a dockable pane. Now that I have converted it, I can drag it to one of the corners or edges of the screen and drop it in that area and the menus can also be stacked together and they can also be scaled again to save you valuable workspace. Anytime you want to undock a menu, you can simply grab it and take away its docking ability. Docking allows you to go to any part of the screen on the edges, on the corners, and again, you have scalability once you get there. To undo it, turn off the docking button. The next item that we want to look at in Gibbs Cam is View and Edit Tool Lists. Previously in Gibbs Cam, you had the ability to load a tool list <clears throat> without previewing it. Now with the View Edit Tool List button, we can go and look at a tool list, we can preview it, 
We can wave our mouse over the individual tools before we ever import it into the part. Tools may now be imported individually with a right click, import to part, and they also maintain their original position in the tool list. You may also import all of the tools with a single button from any tool list from any other part. I have now imported all the tool lists together and now let's go grab a couple of more tools from a different tool list. Tool list number one. And I'm just going to grab the two and the four inch tool, right click, import to part. If the tool cannot go to its original position in the tool list, it will go to the bottom of the tool list. So this was right click, view and edit tool lists. You now have the ability to preview the tools before you import them into GibbsCam. Let's now look at another enhancement to GibbsCam, align face to CS. With face selection turned on, and this part out here in space, we want to align it to the coordinate system. We've always had that ability to right click and align face to CS since Gibbs Cam version 12. But now we have the ability to flip the part over because many times the part may come in upside down. Select the face, right click, align face to CS will allow you to flip the part over rather than use the 2D rotate command or on the plugins solids alignment command, we have new functionality with align face to CS. Let's put this part in the body bag and let's talk about some enhancements to the CAD system inside of Gibbs Cam. Let's look at some 2D CAD enhancements. We now have mouse shapes that we can draw inside of Gibbs Cam. I'm going to draw these three circles. First I'm going to delete them. And then I'm going to go to Geometry Palette, to the Circle menu, and there is a new function here on the Circle menu called Mouse Circle. I'm going to set my grid to an eighth of an inch, and I want to place a hole at X minus one and a half, Y zero, with a radius of 625. I want to do the same thing over here at an inch and a half, Y zero with a diameter or radius of 0.625. And let's put another one here in the middle with a diameter of one and a quarter. You've seen this part before and it's starting to take shape, but let's look at shape combine menu now. Now that we have the ability to put shapes up on the screen with a simple click and drag, here we are going to use a new trim function capability under shapes, combine shapes. In this first example, we're going to take this group of circles and simply combine those shapes. Now we're going to go back to the chamfer command. We're going to select radius, one and a quarter radius, click do it, and we now have a shape that's very familiar to us who know the flange part. We also know that the flange part has a 1 8 inch offset on it. Let's go to the shape menu, offset, double click the geometry, select the mouse offset mode, and here we can, using the grid, we can set the grid to wherever we want it and set the distance at 1 8 of an inch. Again, this part looks very familiar to us and we were able to create it easier than ever. Let's look at one more enhancement to functionality and that is in the dimension palette. We do have a few new dimension styles, but the most important part of the dimension palette is the new preview capability. If we click on a point and then hover over another point, the dimension does not become permanent until we press our control key and select the point. 
the dimension now becomes permanent and we can go and do that with the same functionality on a new style which is vertical. Once you are happy with where the point is going, simply press the control key, click your left mouse button, and the new dimension functionality is activated. We're going to skip now into another part file and talk about other enhancements to GibbsCam other than functionality and usability. Let's look at the new ability that we have in GibbsCam of pinch milling. Previously, we have had the ability through the sync control on multiple machines to do pinch turning. Now, using the exact same method, we have the ability to generate pinch milling operations. You simply create the operation as normal, go to the sync control, and select your top and bottom of the operations. I want to sync 1 and 7, create sync. 2 and 3, sync. And we can sync each operation as we go down through the list, creating pinch milling operations. A tremendous new functionality to the Gibbs Cam MTM. Let's now go to another workpiece, part file number three, and let's look at intermediate tooling enhancements. Previously, when you had an intermediate tooling list delivered to you, and you went to select that intermediate tool from the list, you only got a very brief description of what that intermediate tooling component was going to be. Let's open tool number three and press the tool setup data button and you can see now that the intermediate tooling is now graphically interactive with you the programmer. I'm going to remove this tool block completely from here and we're going to start over again. Graphically I can select the block and then I can select the tool attachment and stack multiple intermediate tooling components together. And of course, we can always inspect that tooling component before we even close the tool setup data. And by pressing Preview Tool Group, we also get a good look at what the turret looks like so that we can make sure that we don't have any interferences between tools. Let's skip down and look at tool number six, which is a little bit different. It is a broaching tool, and you can see it is at tool attachment. Well, what's that all about? Let's remove that and start over again. This tool needs a block. I can now graphically select it from a list. That tool also needs a bushing. If I select the three-quarter bushing, I'll see that, well, that was the wrong one. Let's make an educated guess. Let's get rid of the sleeve and let's select the half inch sleeve. That looks a lot better. And again, preview tool group works. So these are enhancements to intermediate tooling and you now have a graphical interface to select and stack your intermediate tools. Let's now move on to the next section of the Gibbs Cam 14 rollout. Let's move on to 3D material only. Let's open the next part file, which is going to be part file number four. And let's look at what we have in 3D material only. We now have the ability to pass material only off to different types of operations and in different coordinate systems. Here we have a part in a mill turn lathe that has multiple coordinate systems. We did the roughing, we did the turning, and now we have a pocket to deal with. Let's have a quick look at what's going on in the part file before we start. Let's run the first couple of ops. There's our roughing, and then we have a finish op. <clears throat> and after the finish op, we are going to have an end mill working in each of the pockets on the front face of the part. Let's see what it would look like previous without the material only passed off from different types of operations. 
We're going to turn off material only and redo the op. And as you can see, it doesn't know that there is not material there. We will click back onto material only, press redo, and let's have a look at this one operation by itself. And we'll look at it in Tool Sim. Rewind and play. Material only, again, now has the ability to hand off to different operations and different coordinate systems. Let's look at the next part file in 3D material only, part file number five, and this is going to be a milling file using standard roughing in two different operations. Here we have a part that's very, very complex. We're going to hold it in a UMC 750 type machine, and let's look at the ops real quick before we start. Op 1, machines from the top down in the XY coordinate system. Operation 2 is in a totally different rotation on the side of the part, and as you can see, has material only applied to it. Previous to now, it did not have the ability to transfer this material only from one coordinate system to the next. And simply by clicking material only, you can see that the toolpath is now completely updated for OP2, which is at a different rotation in a different coordinate system and may be a different type of operation. Let's have a quick look at this toolpath as we run around. We're using the offset roughing with the technology set to offset trim, offset from part, trim to material, which works better for outside shapes. This one, offset from part and material, works better for closed shapes. This one works better for open shapes. I've had the program stop just before we go into the rotation so that we can see it clearly as it starts to do the material only op here in op number two at the second rotation. Again, we're using the exact same strategy, offset from part, trim to material, and the new functionality is passed from one rotation to the other in material only. Material only also stretches into file number six for five axis milling, and this is totally new and quite tremendous in that the five axis milling ops now have a material only button. In op one, we only told the end mill to search for material starting at three inches above the current coordinate system and going to zero. Whereas on the second op, we've told it to search for material anywhere that it can find it in this group of heights called automatic min max from both. So let's look at this toolpath without material only and watch the process manager down here. Look, material only, it found material up there, material only off. We're going to turn material only back on and instead of cutting air, the toolpath is now going to go and find material where it can. Gibbscam was one of the world leaders in non-air cutting technology many, many, many years ago. And again, this is in the five axis or the multi-axis package. Material only now works in a number of different types of tool paths. So consult your programming manual in your version 14 documentation to see which tool paths apply to 3D material only. While we're here, let's talk about posting and output. This is a D style machine with tool center point programming and dynamic work offsets. Therefore, our coordinate systems need to be all put out in CS1. But wait a minute, there's something missing here. The WFO column is gone. That's because we have new graphical functionality in Gibbscam to allow you to assign coordinate systems on output. Let's assign an NC file to that. And now let's go to work fixtures. And we now have a graphic interface here
to tell us where we're going to output the coordinate systems to. And you can pick from any of the coordinate systems on your machine. Since this is a D-style machine, and we did have multiple input coordinate systems, but a D-style machine with TCPC and DWO requires that all of the coordinate systems be output under work fixture P1 or G54. This is, again, new functionality for work fixture output, and you can do it by operation or by coordinate system. In the next segment of our GibbsCam 14 rollout, we're going to talk about advanced kinematics. When we launched our universal kinematic engine a few years ago, this was one of the goals that we had in mind, which is U-axis turning. If you are in the valve or precision pipe business, you no doubt will understand what a U-axis head is. It's a head that's mounted to a milling machine to be able to process parts that are too large or ungainly to be swung in a lathe. This U-axis head is cutting the phonograph finish on the front face of a valve. This is a critical part of valve making and is very easily accomplished inside of Gibbs Cam with the U-axis head. As you can see, each operation simply shows up as a turning operation in a milling machine. If you have a machine like a Giddings & Lewis, a Karaki, or a Nomura, you will find exceptional value in the Gibbs Cam Advanced Kinematics U-axis turning and milling option. When you go to the intermediate tooling page, you will be able to select the U-head from a list of tools. And also, as you can see, this U-head has five different tool positions, each of which you can select for one of five different types of tools. And you can easily process your valve and pipe parts using this U-axis turning and milling option. Let's move on to another part of advanced kinematics. In part file eight, let's look and talk about swappable heads. In very large portal and horizontal type machines nowadays, you will see a lot of heads that are available to be swapped in and out of the spindle automatically by the machine. Let's look at this machine from the front. Let's get a tool pass started here. And let's look at this machine from the front view so that you can watch it change the heads. And what we have here is a Waldrich Coburg Taurus. If you have a Pama Speed Ram, a Pama Verta Ram, an Akuma MBR, or other type of machine that has swappable heads, Gibbs Cam can help you. Not only can we place the toolpath on the part, but we can control the mounting and unmounting of these automatic heads. These heads range in configuration from a plain vertical head to a five axis universal head to right angle heads. And once you mount those heads in your machine, you can simply mill with them like you mill with any other tool the tool path will automatically be rotated by the attachment that you currently have in your machine, whether it's a single angle right angle head or a multiple angle head. And again, the heads are simply selected from your intermediate tooling list. And as you can see, they are available here, again, in the new graphic loading form that we have for our new intermediate tooling items. In the fourth and final segment of this Gibbs Cam version 14 rollout, we will introduce you to three new Gibbs Cam purchased options. The first of which is Gibbs Cam probing. Then we will move to OptiCam wire EDM and finally to hybrid additive. In Gibbs Cam probing, the first thing that you will notice when you select a milling machine MDD and create a new mill part, 
that you now, in your tool list, have access to probe tools of various configurations. Once you select a probe tool, you may describe the exact probe tool that you have and GipsCam will use it to probe your part. In this particular part file, we are going to set datums only and we're going to show you how to do that. In GipsCam probing, there are three different types of probing toolpaths. Basic, generic, and then there is a third-party plugin for companies out there who build plugins for GibbsCam. In this particular file, we're going to talk about basic and generic. In the basic probing, you can select the probing operation and then the probing tool. And in basic probing, you simply plug in a probing routine that you have already created you now have captured that inside of GibbsCam and you can use this in other part files. This is called basic probing. Let's step into generic probing and look at what it takes to create a datum on the outside of a part. We're going to datum this lower left hand corner and update work fixture one. That's all that's really required is that you combine the tool with the process select probing outside corner work fixture or work plane we want work fixture and a number of parameters that determine where the probe makes its clear points before it starts probing let's have a look at this probing operation and let's see how we datum this part we want you to get full use out of your probe and not just use it as an edge finder when we slip into the next file, file number 10, we're going to have a look at what it takes to create a probing operation on a part and why would you want to probe inside of GibbsCam. Number one, you're able to probe inside of GibbsCam. Let's go to Shapes and let's select Circular Pocket. You want to probe inside of GibbsCam so that you can now integrate your probing and machining operations together to give you more accurate parts. Number one, you will datum the part. Number two, once you are machining, you can measure this bore just before you finish it and find out what the tolerance is. Let's do that right now. Let's select circular pocket. I'm going to click on the circle. Instead of set work fixture, we are going to measure and we are going to alarm if the hole is undersized or oversized by a thousandth of an inch. Let's make the probe depth minus 0.9 and press the do it button. You now see that we have created a probing operation. Let's look at it in OPSIM and let's see what the probing cycle looks like. Once you can create probing cycles inside of your machining operations, your machining process becomes automatic. The probing and the measuring are all done together without interruption of your machining process. The GibbsCam probing is very, very easy to use. And again, it allows you to automate your processes. We will have another GibbsCam rollout based solely on probing and another one on the OptiCam wire EDM. So keep an eye on your email for those upcoming dates. Another new option in GibbsCam version 14, one of our purchased options, is the OptiCam wire EDM. Many of you are familiar with our old wire EDM product that works off of 2D geometry and was very capable. The new OptiCam Wire EDM brings a new capability to GibbsCam Wire in that we can use solid models and automatic feature recognition to cut your wire parts. This greatly cuts down on the workload for the programmer and generates shapes for you automatically. We're going to look at a shape that we've generated already. We'll go to OptiCam, Graphic Simulation, and let's push the go button 
and we will see the wire head approaching the part where the thread up hole is and off we go cutting the outside of the part. We're going to show you how to add features to this wire EDM part and a little bit more about how OptiCam wire EDM works. As you can see it is embedded right into the Gibbs Cam interface so we do have single interface capability. The individual operations are stored here in the operation list. We also have control over the origin, wire strategy, technology data, workpiece, and post processors. We do have post processors and technology data for all of the new and modern wire EDM machines as well as some of the older ones. Let's add a new operation and cut the center of this hole out. I'm going to click here under workpiece and new operation. There is our new operation. We simply right click and we're going to select manual feature recognition. It says the prompt select a single face to create a feature. I'm going to select this face. It says I found it. This is what the diameter is. I'm going to finish feature and click OK. We have now created a wire path for that part automatically. Let's go to OptiCam graphic simulation and notice that when we highlight an operation it is the one that is shown inside of the Gibbs Cam Wire EDM module. We have operations and again we have all of the technology data right here at our fingertips. Let's go look at another OptiCam Wire EDM part. Let's look at file number 12 which is the 4-axis Wire EDM part that was part of the Gibbs Cam training package of the original Wire EDM. Many of you know this part and know how labor intensive it was to get all of the sync points made correctly into Gibbs Cam. We'll right click Operation 1, Automatic Feature Recognition. We're going to select External Features Only. Select and just wave your mouse towards the part and when you press Do It, you now have a wire path that is fully connected it actually has a piece of solid material around the outside of it and all of the wire synchronization is done for you automatically. Let's speed up this display a little bit and as it's cutting through it's telling you what it's cutting. We can rotate it around and look at it while it's cutting and see that the synchronizations are true and correct and this was the culmination wire part for Wire EDM and Gibbs Cam. Now for OptiCam Wire, it's one of the basic parts. OptiCam Wire has a tremendous new capability for Wire EDM inside of Gibbs Cam. With the rapidly expanding 3D printing market, this has brought a new challenge to us in the CNC programming market. There are CNC machine tools now that can 3D print metal and machine in sequential operations. These machines have a print head that actually lays down metal on the part using a hot process. Let's have a look at the nozzle. It's one of the tools that's available on the Gibbs Cam tool list now. And the nozzle and the print head, it contains a copper or ceramic nozzle. It uses a shielding gas, a laser or a wire, or powder to create the heat to melt the material for the operation. This is a simple tilt curve cladding operation and let's have a quick look at the inside of the operation to see what parameters there are. Additive mode is cladding, boundary tilt, tilt angle 15 degrees. We get to tell it what the height is and what the track height is of each element. Let's move on to the next file and let's look at a circular fill pattern. In Gibbs Cam, we give you different patterns to fill different types of areas. In this case, a circular fill. We look at all the different options here that are available for pattern types and let's watch this toolpath run 
on additive machining. Additive machining is becoming more common and there are at least eight very common machine tool manufacturers out there building platforms that can print and machine at the same time. This brings a new level of productivity to the shop floor. Let's go to another file and let's look at a fill curve called a Hilbert fill curve. The Hilbert fill curve is simply a curve that a mathematician created in the 1800s and we found it useful for cladding parts in CNC machines. Let's watch this Hilbert curve fill run. In sequential operations we are going to print then machine then print then machine. The printing is done. I'm going to slow down the rendering. Here comes the cutter. It smooths out the surface and now we're going to print some more material. In GibbsCam, the printing works just like any other operation except instead of taking metal off, we are now putting metal on and removing metal in the same machine. Again, this is the Hilbert fill curve and yes, we're going to machine off one last layer and now we're going to go look at an STL built up part on this propeller. We have a solid model of the blades. We have a printing strategy and we have a tool path. The tool path here is going to allow us to print these blades onto that hub. The blades are here in the body bag and are called out on the feature manager. Let's have a look at what this operation looks like starting from 12 millimeters going to 150 we are cladding one direction and this will be on a five axis machine. Let's have a look at the OPSIM here to see and let's set our settings to fast to make it go by quicker so we can get to the machining portion of this part. Here comes the print head and as you can see the blades are growing we get to tell GibbsCam how much extra material to leave for machining. Once the machining happens, it works just like any other 5-axis process in any other 5-axis machine. Again, there are about 8 CNC machines on the market now that you can purchase that will perform additive and subtractive machining in the same platform. Additive machining with metal is nothing new and has been around for more than 60 years, but the ability to add the metal on a three-dimensional part with a CNC machine is something new indeed. And here you can see a simple five-axis tool path removing the metal from this particular propeller blade. The part will rotate and the next propeller blade will come into play. You can split the tool path start at the top and machine a third of the way down on each blade and then half the way down and then two-thirds of the way down so you can split the machining top to bottom on these tool paths. Additive machining in GibbsCam. Additive and subtractive in the same CNC machine.